<laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Breakfast Link. We already talking, we already having a good time. Minister Bernard here, such an honor to be back with you again, and this is the lovely... Kim Arrington with the Ministry Dream Team. Welcome, welcome to the pre-show. Absolutely, and she has the most professional voice well, we're gonna on our fun. team. Yes, yeah, so and we're going to have like so much... box, I'm out, okay? <laughs> we're just grateful. We're coming out of the 830 <laughs> service this morning. Yeah, it was really awesome. It was good. Really phenomenal, really phenomenal. Really excited about what God is doing here at Linked Up Church. And I'm excited that all of you are jumping on, jumping on. You guys started early today. I mean, it's been nuts. I, it's great to see William Bradley, Kristen Bazella, Kristen Brown on Facebook, always with us. But YouTube, I don't know what's happening. Y'all are in there. I mean, Laverne. You are sharing and, Linked Up Church. Absolutely. Thank La you so Laverne much. Laverne and Jonathan and Tanya and Brenda Hatchett, Lily Valentin, Jackie Hall. And uh, I don't know who room 1002, but we appreciate you for being on as well. You might want to put your name in there because I don't want to call you room 1002, mm. unless that is your name. So continue to share our <laughs> link because we want to reach as many people out there to come check Absolutely. us out at Linked Up Church. Let them know we'll start our service at 11 a.m. So they still got time. Actually, well, we started now. So tell them, come on in now. They come party with us now. And Absolutely. then we'll go into prayer mm -hmm. and then worship. So, yeah, come in so they can settle in and be ready for the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And Holy Spirit has been moving through our pastors with this uh, mm -hmm. amazing series that we've been in. Um, last week, we got part three to eight. Today, we already have a precursor. We know what's happening in part four. Stop. But uh, folks has been amazing. What have been some of the things you've been able to pull out? So my nugget has really worked on being more compassionate mm. and uh, forgiving because yeah. there were a couple times Pastor Trish stepped on my stiletto. <laughs> so I had to be like, ouch. Uh, but being more forgiving and going like this mm. and letting my husband lead a little bit more because mm. I'm a very strong personality. But you wouldn't know that unless you knew me. Of course. Because I'm coming across sweet real as sweet. <laughs> so for those dominating, those D personalities in women, it's not such a bad idea for us to just kind of chill, just mellow it. So just try to wait an extra three seconds before I respond. Mm, that's really, and, really good. And then ask, was I sweet? than before. <laughs> That's awesome. I know for me, uh, Pastor Trish actually said something uh, in the midst of the message last week about overachievers and the importance yes. of recognizing that many times overachiever, overachievers are looking for uh, approval mm. from something that um, they can't get externally. They really need to look internal. And mm -hmm. I have I have overachiever moments. I am a gifted person that loves yes. to serve and loves to do a whole lot. And um, it's just really important to make sure that you're getting that approval from the Lord and getting it from yourself and not really trying to prove anything to anybody else. And so that's been a really just a great reminder for me. I, I thought about it all on my vacation. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you don't have to adjust your screen. I am a little bit darker. Spent quite a bit <laughs> of time in the sun. Got to go on vacation with my family this past it's week. Mess. So. Uh, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a whole, I don't know. I'm just. Isn't a, that wonderful? It is Praise wonderful. Okay. Praise God for vacations. Yeah. All right. But despite the vacations, that's been amazing. I know that they had the Relationship Wednesdays again yes. this past week, which has been phenomenal. We, My wife and I weren't in the building this week, but we have been following along every single week. Mm -hmm. And we actually did it on the boat. And so it's been really, really awesome as we've been walking through. And um, Prayer Enrich has, is such a phenomenal system. And so we've been mm -hmm. able to learn a lot from each other and communicate. Uh, have you been able to make it on a Wednesday? So we have not been in the house to mm -hmm. participate. We do online. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I've been able to take some of this relationship series mm -hmm. and actually use it with other interpersonal skills, mm -hmm. coworkers, business dealings, yeah. and see it from a different perspective and yeah. not be so emotional. So I was really glad at the beginning of the series, they said, be open. This is not just if you're married mm -hmm. or engaged. This is like, how do I be a better neighbor? Mm. Listen here and respond accordingly and not respond out of that emotional side. Absolutely. Build a healthier relationship. Absolutely. But I love what you said about finding the balance mm -hmm. that people pleaser mm -hmm. personality, which I knew that I am guilty of, <laughs> that overachieving in church is not gonna win me to the Lord or get uh. a better seat in heaven. But it also helped me realize where I had my broken place inside yeah. as a young girl. And Absolutely. then as a woman and like, man, am I still limping? this point in my mm -hmm. life 
Um, so, you know, it's just time to get up from that place. Absolutely. And um, it was said well this morning. And move forward. Yes. Healthy and whole. Absolutely. Move forward. So, Absolutely. Real Absolutely. We're not giving it all away because you got to come. Hey, you you got so to watch. It's going to yes. be amazing. And so we want to ask you all, um, as we're talking about relationships, mm -hmm. how are you being intentional in building healthy relationships in your life? Yes. So we're getting all this great information. We're getting all this great work. But how are you putting it to use? Um, are you working? And I love the way that you said it's not just about marriages, but it's really about all relationships. So I want you all to share in the chat right now. What are some intentional things that you've been doing or you're planning to do in, in helping to build, continue to build healthy relationships around you? And that's really awesome. Um, yesterday. Um, Minister David did a phenomenal job with Saturday prayer um, mm -hmm. coming out of John 15, um, which is one of my favorite passages of scripture. And uh, man, I mean, he was on fire. Did you get a chance to watch? I did. Yes. I did. And um, he, he's a very soft spoken minister. Mm. But when he speaks, it comes with such authority yeah. uh, to convict Absolutely. and correct. Um, I, I challenge people to go back, write those out, meditate on them, mm -hmm. make them like little postcards where our prayer points and those scriptures, they're short, like two, yeah. two sentences. Put it on your visor and just go back over it and over again and let it convict yeah. and uproot some stuff that's in you. Absolutely. And I know it's still live on YouTube, so make sure you go back and watch that today. But there's so many other things that are going to be happening here in service. I'm excited about worship today. We got some special stuff for you, but we're also getting ourselves ready for the announcements. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things happening here at Linked Up Church with our Lash Women's Ministry, with the plug yes. with little linkland with linked up kids with the men mm -hmm. with outlet yes. there's so much stuff going on you have got to grab your pen and your calendar <laughs> so you can check it out because we are a church on the move absolutely so we're going to watch these announcements in about five seconds once again make sure you're sharing this with your friends and your followers we love you and we'll see you in just a second see you. seniors class of 2023 guess what Linked Up Church is giving away scholarships for $2,500, and you can be a part. All you need to do is go to linkedupchurch.com to find out more details. The deadline is May 7th. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. Peace. Welcome to the Wild West, where the women are fearless and the opportunities are endless. This September, Lash is going west. Register today for the Misbehaven Women's Conference hosted by Pastor Trish and Pastor Erica at the Arizona Grand Resort and Spa in Phoenix, Arizona. Ladies, don't miss this opportunity to unleash your full potential. The $150 registration fee is due by March 26th. Visit linkedupchurch.com for more details. The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Are you really going to make the hard choices to change your life? We had 40000 in student loans, 17000 in cars. I owned a rental property. We in had a line of credit, just stuff. We had 16 credit cards. The proverb says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes. We paid off $83,000. Wow! When desire comes. $144,000. When desire comes. $450,000 in the last seven years. Wow! It is the tree of life. God says this is how you get out of debt. You gotta run, 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 run. There is no doubt that this process called Financial Peace University works. The only question is whether you're gonna be involved. And so if you haven't signed up yet, now is the time. Men of Linked Up Church, Saturday, March 25th, we will present the playbook. What is the playbook? The Playbook is an all men's empowerment brunch where we will be discussing goal setting, planning, personal development, and much, much more. You don't want to miss it. Saturday, March 25th at 1030 a.m. Register at linkedupchurch.com today. It's never too late to get a degree with your name on it. Obtaining your GED can break down so many barriers and open up so many doors of opportunity, whether that's going to college or furthering your career. 
Sign up today for our seven week course that is designed to help you in your educational journey. Visit us at linkedupchurch.com for more information on GED classes and Purpose Central. Linked Up Church, it is going down March 18th at the Gateway Arena. We're having a basketball tournament. So we're calling middle school, high school. We want a young adult team and even an adult team. So come on out for the game. We're going to have a tailgate. And right after the tailgate, we are going to enjoy a Skyhawks game together. The price is only $15. You heard that right. $15. Come on out. So we're hosting a live stand-up comedy show with Dove award-winning comedian and radio personality, Akin Tunde. So my wife and I will do a Q&A, so and funny. Akin Tunde will moderate that. So we know that'll be hilarious all by itself. And so visit us at our website, linkedupchurch.com. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Give me a kiss. All right, and welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, excellent. Let's jump into <laughs> these announcements. And we're well before we jump into the announcements, I want to jump into some of this feedback, if oh, that's okay, because everybody's online, and I know that I think there are some of you on YouTube that may be having some challenges. So keep praying. We know that we're working on it behind the scenes, but on uh, Facebook and on Church Online, looks like we're okay there. Um, and some of you are answering our question, which once again is, how are you being intentional in building healthy relationships in your life? And um, let's see, I want to pull up real quick. Uh, Shay Derry said that she is learning to be a good listener and also watching how she communicates and trying not to be reactive. That's really, really powerful. Um, Kristen said uh, she's intentionally trying to be nice to uh, a young lady, even though she gets on her nerves. And we appreciate it. I'm sure God grace, appreciates that as well. Grace. More grace, more yes, grace. grace. And so that's really, really awesome. Um, and so, and all of these people that are jumping in, Monica Wallace, Andre Michu, um, Sandra Atkinson, great to have you guys online as well. Thank so, you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And as you saw just a moment ago, we've got so many things that are happening here. Uh, you want to talk about financial peace? Financial peace is my favorite class, and I do hope you're signing up. To get balance for your budget, hey, you're getting ready to do your tax returns. And if you're worried about how to pay the IRS, then you need to be in financial peace. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a great class. And for $25, get a facilitator. And look, the bonus is you're going to walk away from that session having paid off, I'm sure, a couple of thousand dollars. I got debt free. I mm -hmm. love that program. It Absolutely. works. It so. definitely works. It's worked yeah. for me and my family. As I mm -hmm. shared, um, we got to go on vacation this week. And a lot of that is because of the tenants that we've learned through financial peace. And so uh, it taught us how to be able to save and how to be able to put stuff away. And so make sure that you get that. And it, as she said, it's only $25. Um, and we don't know how much longer it's going to be at that price. So yes. you want to get in now. Get in now. The church um, is doing a great thing. When we when we host this, it's $100 we charge students. Yeah. So I'm so excited that my church would kind of eat the cost of that to mm -hmm. offer it to you to become more financially balanced. Don't miss this opportunity. Do not miss that opportunity. And yeah. speaking of opportunities, I just wanted to give a shout out because the last few weeks we've been talking about GED. Yes. And I want to congratulate. This is the first time we are actually saying GED registration is closed, yes. not because the class has started, but we, because yes. we have so many people. We have, we have the class is full. And so yes. thank you for sharing this with your friends and your family. And <laughs> congratulations to all of you that have signed up and are making that decision to go after what God has called you yeah. to. Yes, we're so excited. Now you are going to be the ones impacting the kingdom. And That's you're going right. to feel so good about yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, this one's always near and dear to my heart. This yes. coming Friday, um, our young adults, our outlet ministry is going to be meeting for first Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got something really special um, well, in, in store spill? for us. Uh, I'll spill a little bit. It's called the interactive game of life. And so we're going to look at adulting. And, you know, it's going to be a really unique thing. So I promise you, you don't want to miss it. We're going to have free food. like I could come? So well, I it's, be a it's, better adult? Well, I mean, you, you, can, you can come, words, but it's really meant for. Love. It, I am loving. It is really kind meant, I'm going to say, it is really meant for those that are 18 to 35, but all of those that are children of the kingdom oh. are welcome. I've got one really, of the numbers in there. 
<laughs> so we would love to see you guys there. That's going to be amazing. Um, and uh, the I, I, I want to kind of keep it in order. Uh -huh. But the Linked Up Scholarship, um, since I'm talking about money stuff, the Linked Up Scholarship application is now open. And so for all of you parents, um, if you've got a, a young person that's graduating high school this year, Linked yes. Up Church actually has a scholarship. We have $2,500 that we want to be able to sow into your young person's life. But they mm. have to sign up and yes. they have to be a part of some things. And so go right now um, to either uh, thepluggym.com or you can go to our website yep. and uh, or talk to Minister Nehemiah today. Grab him in the hallway and get those get that information so your kids can get that. Um, we have that. It's a wonderful way that we want to be able to sow into our kids. Absolutely. Making yep. a difference right here at church. Absolutely. And uh, we were talking about the Misbehaving Women's Conference. You want to talk yes, about that? Yes, I'm really excited. So ladies, lean all the way in, okay? Because I love to travel. I love spa. We're going to Phoenix, Arizona to this like fabulous spa resort. I did call ahead and take a little peek and check out some of the amenities. We can just have the hydrating face Ooh. You can do the clay mask. Yes. So I was just trying to plan it all out. What I love our agenda when we go and travel as divas. Mm -hmm. So we play all day. We have sisterhood fellowship on the beach. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening sessions, our ministry. Yeah. So if you were looking at this and thinking, I don't want to go that far to just sit in a room, you're not. No. You're bonding with some new women, building relationships. Yep. And then we're going to minister to one another in the spirit at 7 p.m. nightly. So at least make your 150 Fifty dollar registration online ASAP. ASAP. Reserve ASAP. your spot ASAP, and then we'll take care of roommates and airfare next. Okay. Absolutely, and fellas, we haven't forgotten about you. We've got our empowerment brunch that's coming up in just a few weeks. The registration for that is open. It's free, but there's going to be some great information. So get your fellas out there, ladies. Sign your guys up. We want to make sure that they get in there. But it's time for us to get ready to go into the worship center. Yes, it's time to go into prayer. So, so come on and. Make sure you share that link with yes. at least three people. Would you do that for us this morning? Share it with at least three people and invite them to join us online this morning. Absolutely. Our pastors are going to be awesome. Minister David's going to be awesome. Yes. Worship's going to be amazing. We got baby dedication. We got God. We and got so it it's going to be awesome. Thank you for doing this with us today. And we love you. And we'll see you in just a few moments. Three, two, one. Bye. Hello family, thanks for joining our service today. Remember, you can always get more information and updates from our website, linkedupchurch.com, or by checking out our Linked Up Church app. Well, it's almost time for service, and that of course means it's time for prayer. For the next few moments, we welcome you to prepare your heart and mind for an unforgettable encounter with God. Then you'll be led in prayer by one of our anointed ministers. How you guys doing this morning? Isn't God good? He is so good all the time. My name is David Walker. I am the Connect Group Director here at Linked Up Church. 
as well as the men's ministry coordinator, and it is an honor and a privilege to be leading pre-service prayer this morning. Yesterday, we had a wonderful time in the presence of God. We had one hour of power on Saturday morning prayer. If you haven't made it to prayer yet on a Saturday morning, you've got to get there. We also would like to welcome our online audience this morning, this morning that are praying with us. We thank God for you being here with us this morning. We're talking about being connected to Jesus. And our main text for today's pre-service prayer is coming out of John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading it in the Passion Translation. These are the words of Jesus. He says, I am a true sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words that I've spoken over you have already cleansed you. So you must remain in life union with me. For I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. When you live your lives bear fruit, abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. Let's go to heaven in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that we live our lives intimately joined to Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that we allow your words to live powerfully within us. We thank you, Father, that we are becoming mature disciples of Jesus that bear abundant fruit. And we thank you, Father, today that we pray for our service today. Lord, we go to you boldly. Your word says, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father, we thank you that we live our lives intimately joined to Jesus. This is not a casual relationship, but Father, we thank you as the life of the vine flows into the branches. Lord, we thank you that your life, your power, your grace, your anointing flows into us because we have a relationship with you, a very intimate and personal relationship with you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that that flow is a continuous flow. It's a flow of power. It's a flow of peace. It's a flow of fruitfulness. It streams from our lives. Lord, we desire to do what you want us to do. Father, not our will, but your will be done. We thank you, Father. We live our lives totally submitted, totally dependent, totally surrendered to you. Being connected to you means being connected to everything, the source of truth, the source of life. You said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. We thank you, Jesus, that we're connected to you. We lean on you. We rely on you. We depend upon you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that our life is not our own. We belong to you. Father, we thank you that you, we allow the words of Jesus to live powerfully within us. We thank you, Father. 
You said, if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. Father, we thank you that your word dominates our thinking. Lord, we thank you that your word is a sharper than any two-edged sword. You said piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Thank you that your word is living deep on the inside of us. You said, Father, you said in your word that we've hid, our, hid your word inside our hearts that we might not sin against you. Father, thank you that every negative word is uprooted today. We evict every negative, doubtful, fearful, anxious word that is trying to live in our soul. We uproot you today in the name of Jesus. And we allow the word, the seed of the word to live on the inside of us and to produce in our lives. We thank you, Father, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, Father God, the sum total of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous decrees endures forever. We thank you, Lord, that we allow the word of God to not depart out of our mouth. But, Lord, we meditate therein day and night that we may observe to do according to all that is written therein. You say, for then we would make our way prosperous and then we would have good success. Thank you, Father, that your word is living big on the inside of us and it's allowing us to go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for maturity, spiritual maturity, that we would become mature disciples of Jesus that bear abundant fruit and give glory to you. Father, all the good that is happening in our life, we don't take credit for it. We know that it is you that is operating and using us as yielded vessels. So, Lord, we don't take any credit for the good that's happening in our lives. But we say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. It's because of you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our very being. We couldn't do it without you. We can't live without you. We couldn't exist without you. So we honor you today and we glorify you and we acknowledge that every good thing, every good thing that you have presented in our life, every good thing that is in our life, is a result of being connected to you. Lord, we let our light so shine before men that they see our good works and they glorify our Father which is in heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we're a light to the a dark world. We thank you, Father, that we're the salt of the earth. We thank you, Father, that we stay connected to the vine. We stay connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we thank you, Father. It is life that we're walking in. Zoe life, the God kind of life in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for today's services. We thank you, Father, for today's service, that your anointing flows in today's service. Father, we thank you. You said where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Lives will be changed today. Bodies will be healed today. Deliverance will take place today in the name of Jesus. Souls will be saved today in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your anointing being upon our pastors, a fresh oil, a fresh anointing being upon them, Father, and that the word of the Lord will have free course and be glorified today in Jesus' name precious name we thank you lord we give you the honor we give you the glory we give you the praise in jesus precious name let's give him a shout of praise hallelujah come on keep that going in this atmosphere somebody release a sound of expectation we expect you oh god we expect you to have your way yes lord
feeling today? Good. Touch your neighbor to your left and to your right. Say, wake up a little bit. Wake up. Wake up. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. We, we came here for a purpose. Now we got something to do. Those of you online, type it in. We got something to do today. God is going to do something awesome in this room. Do y'all agree? If you agree, release your supply. Somebody shout hallelujah. There it is. There it is. Come on, let's give God praise in this place. If you came to bless the Lord, lift him high. Come on, if you came to bless the Lord, lift him high in this place. Hey, put your hands like this. We thought we would sing a couple songs by an, an amazing innovator in the gospel industry. Somebody give God praise for Ty Trinity. Let's go, let's go. Somebody make some noise in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Song goes like this. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul.
Church, give God praise today. Woo! Let's go eat. Anybody come to bless the Lord today? Yeah! Hallelujah. We welcome you, Lord. Son of man, let's say, Son of man, Son of man. say I was lost From deep within my spirit sings Holy, holy In the splendor of your majesty From deep within my spirit sings Holy, holy Say in the splendor of your majesty From deep within my spirit sings We call you Holy, yeah. holy In the splendor of I 
I have a reason to bless him. Anybody else have a reason to honor him? Somebody tell him that right now. Come on, lift it in this atmosphere. Tell him why you love him. Tell him why you appreciate him. I'll tell you why, God. Because you're everything. Everything. You're everything to me. Yeah. Everything to me. Everything. Oh. Everything. Oh. Everything to me, Lord. Everything you're my life. Without you, you are everything to me. Everything to me. You're my peace. Hey. You're my peace. Yeah. Everything to me, yeah. Everything to me. You're my strength. You're my strength. You're everything to me, yeah. You're Watch this. To me. You're my answer. You're my answer. Everything to me, yeah. everything you're to my me. joy in sorrow. Joy in sorrow. You wipe the tears from my eyes. You're everything. everything you're my me. joy in sorrow. Joy in sorrow. Grief will not be your portion today. You're everything. everything to joy me. in sorrow. Joy of the Lord is your strength. You're everything. You're everything to me. Joy in sorrow. Joy in sorrow. I feel it rising in this place. You're everything to me, Lord. You're everything. You're to my me. hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. You're everything to me, God. You're everything. You're to my me. hope for tomorrow. Tomorrow. I need somebody with some authority. We're going to say that again. You're everything to me. Everything You're to my me. hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. I dare not put my trust anywhere else. You're everything. You're everything You're to me. You're my hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. Now, if you really love them, lift your hands in this place and call them Master. Master. Call you Savior. Savior. Hallelujah. You're my Lord and my ruler. Ruler. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. You're my redeemer. redeemer. When life got crazy, you were my shelter. shelter. When my money got funny, you were my provider. Fighter. Hallelujah. My deliverer. Everybody know him to be a healer. healer. Oh, I feel him. He's my father. father. He confirms me. He's my father. father. He justifies me. Father. father. Hey, he's my savior. savior. What is his name? We call you Jesus. your behalf, Jesus. Jesus, a perfect provider is Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, he's Jesus. Jesus, we're not ashamed to call the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now somebody take a moment and lift your own soul. Worship you forever. So, we'll worship you forever. Something's happening in this atmosphere. We'll worship you forever. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Let your 
sound fill this room. Let your worship fill this moment. your heart I
just for a moment I've been privileged to be married for 15 years I've been dating my wife for 22 years I have been friends with my wife for 29 years how crazy would it be if I just said I love you and never reached my arms to her if I never reached to embrace her if I never reached to watch this to bring her close to me. I'm going to challenge everyone in this place, those of you online as well. If you love him, reach for him. Maybe the challenge that some of us are having in our lives is that we say we love God, but we're not embracing him. We're not allowing him into our space. You can say you love him all day, but will you surrender? I love you so much. I love you so much. I give you everything because you are my everything. You are my everything. Yeah. Somebody with your hands lifted say, I love you, I love you. I want you close to me. I love you. I want to be close to you, Lord. I'll worship. Come on. I'll worship forever. I'll worship You deserve every second, every minute, every day. I worship forever. I worship forever. I worship forever. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's surrender to him with hands lifted high up in the air. Just surrender to him. If you need answers, if you need deliverance, if you need direction, if you need wisdom, reach up and receive now. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I love what Psalm 68, 35 says. He says, oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. So this building is not what makes God awesome. It's you that makes God awesome. Because yeah. he goes on to say, the God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. So if you truly love him, lift up holy hands and offer up the sacrifice of praise and worship out of your own lips. Father, we magnify you. And we declare right now that we love you forever, Father. Even in our weakness, we love you. In our despair, we love you. In our anxiety, we love you. In our, in our disruption, we love you, Father. We love you for you are the God of answers. You are the God of wisdom. You are the God of deliverance. You are the God of healing. You are God Almighty, and in you does all power rests, Father. It is in you that we live and move and have our being. You truly are great and greatly to be praised. Yes, we love you yeah. forever. Yeah. We love you yeah. forever. We love you yeah. forever. Yeah. Lord God Hallelujah. Almighty. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Before you all start clapping. Hold on. Hold on. Excellent job, Amanda. Minister Bernard. See, it's yes. a new service. This second oh, service is maybe seven weeks old, maybe seven. And so it's consistent training and developing and 
helping people to understand why God wants you to come to church. See, he wants you to come to church yes. so that you can give him the glory that is due unto his name. Yes. Was, was God good to you throughout all of last week? No doubt about it, right? So his expectation is that you return on Sunday and you just worship him and you honor him and you glorify him because he protected you last week. He provided for you last week. Come on, he kept a roof over your head last week. He put food on your table. So we should never come in here. That's why he said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving right. yes. and, into and into his courts, courts with, with praise. As soon as you come through those doors, it should hit you that God has been good to me. And so, so I'm not satisfied with that. I think it's worth that course. I love you forever. Yes. I worship you forever. And I want to see every hand lifted up high. And not just the music department singing, but you all join and become a part of the choir that sings along as we all give God the glory that is due unto his name. Just take us through those chorus again. Yes. Let's say I love you, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh, I love you, Lord. Forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Now go ahead and declare and decree your own words out of your heart, spoken out of your mouth. Now take that song and decree and declare before God with your hands lifted up. Father, we'll love you. I'll love you forever. I will trust you forever. I will worship you forever. And most importantly, Father, for everything that you do in my life, I'll give you the glory forevermore. We love you. We trust you. We glorify you because you are God. Hallelujah. 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 See, when you want a greater manifestation, there has to be a greater participation. You can't come in and be a an spectator and expect to get everything that God wants you to have in this service. You have to first give before you can receive. When you draw nigh to him through your praise and worship, I mean, you know God's going to draw nigh to you. And I promise you, whatever's in your life that is not like God, it cannot coexist when you are worshiping and praising God. Come on, poverty has to flee. Come on, doubt has to flee. Come on, depression has to flee. Sickness and disease has to flee. 
I just thought it was worth it to take a few extra moments today. Such a new service. We just brought the second service back. And so we just want to make sure that you know it's important to God that when you come to service, you give him the glory that is due unto his name. Yep. And me, you know, Pastor Gregory just said, the greater the manifestation. Greater the participation. The greater the participation, the greater the manifestation. And Holy Spirit told me to just one more word in there. See, your participation is based off of your expectation. That's good. That's good. So if you're truly expecting, you will participate. That's and it's good. in your participation That's that good. you get a manifestation of God's answers, his glory, his deliverance, his healing, whatever it is. That's good. That's excellent. See, if you're not expecting nothing, he'll meet you right where you are. But God is too good for you not to expect all that he's already made available to you. Amen. Yeah. Our music Praise department God. works so hard. Can we just thank yes. God for our singers, our band, our director. We appreciate each and every one of you. Now, you all have been standing for a moment, so I do want you to just stand for a few more moments. We have a, a few babies to dedicate today. So I want to ask for the parents, grandparents, godparents, and support system for Aaron Dominique Marie Bush to please come forward. And then the parents, grandparents, godparents for Avery uh, Gianna Marie Bush to please come forward, same group. And then the parents, grandparents, godparents for Honest Lee Best to please come forward. And then I want to ask for the parents, grandparents, godparents for Zoe Arugu to please come forward. Parents, grandparents, godparents for Nomi McDonald to please come forward. Parents, grandparents, uh, godparents, support system for Cairo Jones. Cairo Jones. Cairo. Oh, see, they corrected that. Do you see that? Cairo. Cairo. I got you. I got you. All right. And then Axel Barku. Axel Barku. Parents, grandparents, godparents, and support system. I tell you what, we are dedicating a lot of babies today with a huge support system. They should get babysitters whenever they need them with this level of support here today. All right, if you all could just make your way uh, in and then the babies that are being dedicated, if they can be in the front and then the support system stand directly behind them. Just the parents and the baby in the front and then the support system stand directly behind them. Well, I think it's clear what people were doing, doing during the pandemic. They did not waste that time at all. They made great use of that time. All right, praise God. This is a lot of people coming forward today, a lot of people coming forward. All right, and so again, just the parents and the children stand close to the front. The support system stand behind them so we know exactly who we are dedicating. Are we really getting ready to clear out this whole section over here? Wow. Come on, let, let's thank God for the support system. Wow. Wow, I don't know if I've ever seen that. All right. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and move forward while they're getting themselves. I'm assuming that the remainder of that is the support system. And so these kids should get a lot of presents for their birthdays and all kind of good things, all right? So if everyone that is dedicating their children, if you all would, just look up here at me for a moment. I really want to turn our attention to uh, a reverent moment before God. Here at Linked Up Church, really in the body of Christ, nothing should be done out of tradition. It's most importantly, not out of religion. Everything should be done because you have a personal relationship with God. And that's truly why you're standing here today is out of that relationship, understanding that children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Okay, so I want to read to you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. I'll begin reading at verse 21 so we can understand why we do this biblically. And it says, And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. 
the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And then verse 22 says, Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, her being Mary, Scripture says here, were completed, they brought him, Jesus, to Jerusalem. And the Scripture says to present him to the Lord. And that word present in the Greek there means to dedicate. And so they brought Jesus and they lifted him up and they dedicated him back to the Lord. So, of course, the parents give life. But how many know the child belongs to God? And the parents have a responsibility because the scripture says the fruit of the womb is his reward. So the parents have a responsibility to raise children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. How many know that doesn't guarantee they'll always do everything right? But we do have a Bible promise that says that when you train up a child in the way they should go, when they're old, they will not depart from it. So even if they veer, how many know the Spirit of God will bring them right back on in? He'll bring them back, okay? And you can trust that and you can stand on that. So I'm going to pray corporately up here because there's so many babies. And then I'll come down and grab each one and we'll lift them up and dedicate them back to the Lord. Congregation, will you stretch your hands towards all of these beautiful families today? And so, Father, we, out of our relationship with you, dedicate each child back to you to be used for your glory and for your benefits, Father. I'm praying right now that each child will come to know you at a very early age, be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, recognize and know their calling, Father. And the parents will sense that, know that, and train them up in those bents and giftings that you've placed on the inside of them so they'll maximize their giftings and their talents and grow up to be warriors and very useful for your kingdom. And, Father, grant every parent the wisdom that they need to raise children in times like these. You said that if we ask for wisdom, you'll give us as much as we need, and you'll take none of it back. So give these parents wisdom to raise children in times like these. And so we declare that they will grow up and bypass all childhood sicknesses and diseases. Not one weapon formed against them will prosper. And with long life, Father, they will not die prematurely. With long life, you'll satisfy them and show them your deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. She is gorgeous. And Father, we just present her. We dedicate her back to you to be used for your glory all the days of her life. In Jesus' name, she is out. She is gorgeous. And so, Father, we present her back to you to be used for your glory. We dedicate her for your purposes in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wisdom for these parents. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, you precious. Wow. So, Father, we present back to you to be used for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name. <laughs> sleep today. How did they sleep through that praise and worship? Hi, pretty. And so, Father, we take her and we dedicate her back to you to be used for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Supernatural wisdom for these parents in times like these. In Jesus' name. Amen. Who do we have here? All right. Praise God. supernatural wisdom exceeds the needs of their children. They'll just know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Every time resources are needed, they will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. Ooh, he is out too. I think six out of seven have been asleep up here today. Yeah, he's heavy. So, Father, we present him back to you to be used for your glory. 
for your plans and purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so, Father, more wisdom and as much wisdom as they need. Allow it to manifest supernaturally. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, then we get everyone. So my wife has a gift for each one of you. And once my wife gives you your gift, you are free to go back to your seat. All right. You need any help, babe? Or you got it? Minister Diane, could you come on up if, if you're close? Or Erica, could you help her out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Just to get a head start, the support system can start heading back to the seats. That's half of the church today, just the support system. All right. This is awesome to see. Awesome to see. Praise God. While they're heading back to their seats, we want to thank you, online viewing audience, for being patient with us today uh, as we dedicated these children in praise and worship. Extended just a little bit longer, but we are honored to have you join us today. Of course, all of our information is right there in that YouVersion Bible app. You can go to the Linked Up Church app as well. And, uh, of course, be a virtual evangelist if you're led to today. Share the link. We believe not only will you be blessed, but everyone that you share it with will be blessed. All right? And so Amen. while they're heading back to their seats, it's still going to take a while uh, for them to get back to those seats. So I really don't want to pray uh, until they are all uh, and situated because how I many you know we always want to give honor and treat God and the things of God right so you don't want people walking and moving so I think while they're heading back I'm going to just sing a little song are you Shut all ready? your hands right now towards Pastor Gregory. are you all ready? <laughs> say don't do that Pastor Son she is praying Lord man. don't let him sing Son Lord don't let him sing <laughs> No. He didn't grace any one of us oh, in that category. We could do, a, we could right do a brand new song by Ty Tribbett. What is it? Your favorite one. New, 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 everything new, 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 everything new. Since you dogged me in the way I sung. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Praise God. Just a few more moments, right? And All so, right. Well, while they're doing that, though, can you all tell me what does folks, what is that an acronym for? <laughs> Joni don't count. Joni over there. Family and friends, ordinary people, loved ones, loved, uh, ki kids, and spouse. Yeah, we're going to talk about it today. All right, so they all went and sat down, but we do have to stand up for prayer. And before we go right, and keep in mind, we have to stand up the rest of the service, so then you all be able to sit right back down. So if you're not standing, please do so. It's just, uh, it's not for respect for us. It's just honor, uh, out of honor and respect for the word of God, right? Because we're all preparing our hearts to receive it. And so, Father, we just thank you once again for this opportunity to sow into the hearts and lives of your people, Father. As we talk about today the subject or of conflict resolution, as we bring that to a close, Father, I pray that you'll give us insight, you'll give them revelation, Father, and ultimately we'll all have better relationships as a result of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Greet your neighbor and say, good to see you this fine Sunday afternoon. Yes. It'll be afternoon by the time y'all leave. Praise God. All right. So we're talking about folks, right, and, and the relationship goals that we should have with people. Let me preface this. You know, yes, we're talking about a lot of times we might make reference to married couples or parenting. But how many know these are foundational just as Christians? Before we get into the specifics, like on the, at the marriage workshop, we're, gonna, we're, we're diving into the specifics as it pertains to your relationship with your significant other. But these are foundational behaviors that we should aim to adopt and, and, and operate in as we are interfacing with all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. But they are specifically and significantly true 
in our very intimate and personal relationships, such as our spouse, yep. our children, or our loved ones, all right? Mm -hmm. Foundational scripture for this series is found in Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 12, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Again, this chapter is the foundational, it contains the foundational scripture upon which Linked Up Church was built because Pastor Gregory and I, we're committed to the building of relationships, not just your interpersonal relationships with those around you, but this relationship most importantly, your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12, it says, you are always dear and dearly loved by God. So robe yourselves with virtues of God since you have been divinely chosen to be holy, be merciful as you endeavor to understand others and be compassionate, showing kindness toward all. Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. It goes on to say, tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously Forgiven by Jesus Christ. We all have been forgiven by God. Some of us as recently as three minutes ago, right? <laughs> Goes on to say, if you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. Release it to them, for love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. It doesn't say how much money is in your bank account. It doesn't say how much you can quote scripture. It says love is the mark of true maturity. And not just how you love your spouse or your children or those in your household, but love amongst the people indeed. Mind you, God will judge us in our final days, not based off of our sin because we're righteous before him through the blood of Jesus, but how we treated him and how we treated each other. Amen. Yep. So in the context of what we're talking about in this series, today's focus is conflict. We know the currency for relationships in the kingdom is the words that come out of our mouth, right? And Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. And so we really have to discipline ourselves. And it takes time. It takes a lot of times in the word, your prayer life, disciplining yourself to think about what you say before you say it. But you have to remember, even if I'm dealing with a bad situation, I mean, you know, I still would rather speak life into it than death. Right? And so it's still worth it to at least speak what I want and not what I'm actually dealing with. Right, because death and life is in the power of my words. So I want to speak life into my situations. So, and so if I could interject real quick there. So oftentimes when we're going through something and we feel the need to tell our spouse, tell our cousin, tell our sister or our brother, tell mama and them, tell our friend, our coworker, we're giving, if we have, we're created in the image of God. Right. And truly life and death are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. We're feeding a bad situation when we repeat the badness of the situation. Right. Gossip, yeah, for sure. It's, now it's, it might be fact, but the right. more we repeat it, yeah. Yeah. the more life we give it, which is why in our minds it becomes bigger than the victory that God has gave, given us over it. Because we're not speaking the victory or the life to it. That's good. You understand? That's good. That's good. All right. And so in review, conflict resolution, uh, we gave the definition of conflict. We gave the definition of resolution. And those together simply stated conflict resolution is the effort to come into an understanding and agreeable state of functional existence between two or more people, groups or parties. So remember, when it's more than one person, the ideal is, especially when it's male and female, because we don't see anything alike, right? We can look at the same situation and we'll draw a different conclusion because we don't process information the same way. So the goal is not for us to think alike. The goal is for us to think together and to figure out how our differences in terms of how we see this, how can we make them agreeable so that we can move down the road in our relationship, okay? And so resolution, we always want to think about how do I resolve something and not how I contribute further to its demise. So if I'm thinking resolutions, I'm trying to come into some kind of agreement with the person that I'm communicating with so that we can make progress, okay? Then she read from Philippians chapter 
chapter 4, 2, and 3. We gave you the conflict resolution blueprint in Matthew chapter 18. A lot of good information under that. Then we talked about conflict resolution skills. Number one is initiative. And so, you know, if you've got two people and neither one of them are making any effort to solve the problem, how many know you're going to be at a standstill? Somebody has to take the initiative and say, I want to move on and beyond this. Because so we talked time about that. does not heal all wounds. How many of y'all have heard that saying, time heals all wounds? That's how many so know time natural. does not heal all wounds? Actually, the more time it goes unresolved, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Okay? Excellent, babe. All right? And so from there, we talked about uh, humility, right? The pursuit of peace over personal victory. So a lot of people, they're more concerned about winning than they are pursuing peace in a relationship. But always remember this. If we're in a relationship and I win and she loses, how many know I still lost? It's only a win if we both win in that relationship. So we talked about all of those things. We looked at a counter practice called competition, right? A lot of couples and people that are in relationship compete against each other. How do you compete against yourself? If the two are actually one, then there is no competition, right? When she wins, I win. And when I win, she wins. So what we should be trying to do is always help each other win because helping her win helps me me win. Can you all see that? So competition cannot be a part of it. And then we're going to pick up today with point number three on compromise. Number three in conflict resolution, there has to be compromise. Yes. Now, let's make it clear online and in the building. I am not talking about compromising the word of God or the standard of God as far as holiness is concerned, right? I am talking about compromising your will in the situation. We cannot win if there's a little, if there's not a give and take on both sides right. or all sides of the situation. Right. Sometimes we just have to pick up the slack, but there are times where someone else is going to have to pick up the slack on us. And guess who makes it good no matter what? God. God makes it good no matter what. How many of you worked on teams uh, at work or in school? You've been a part of a team. There was a project that involved two, three, four, five, six, seven people or departments. And you had somebody in that team, on that team that just was not pulling their weight. But the reward or the demise fell on all y'all. And you got mad at the one that wasn't pulling their weight. Right? And there engages or has to engage some type of conversation. Some type of compromise needs to be done because sometimes you might need to sow that seed in that situation. But then you will reap it later on. That's right. Listen to what Philippians chapter 2 in the common English version says. This is Paul in prison. And as I said before, his perspective now is broad because he's saying, you know what? It's not about me. It's about the gospel. Right. It's not about me. It's about people being saved. It's not about me. It's about eternity. It's not about me. It's about glorifying God. And he says in Philippians 2 verse 2, he says, now make me completely happy. Live in harmony by showing love for each other. Be united in what you think as if you were only one person. Wow. What? He's not talking about uh, saints or spouses now. He's not talking about people who are married. He's talking about the body of believers. Live in harmony with one another as if you were operating in one mind. How about that for your shanana? Right? And so when we don't want to compromise, when we think that my way is the best way or the only way, we do not win. And nor are we operating in love because God is the author and finisher of our faith. And if we are believers, we understand that he has multiple ways to skin a situation. That's right. I love what Ralph Ellison said in the book Invisible Man. He said, life is to be lived, not controlled. And humanity is one by continuing to play in the face of certain defeat. In other words, what he was talking about there that, listen, it might not be going down the way it needs to go down, and it might not even be right, but I still have to be engaged because eventually there's going to be a winner. That's right. But it's the one that endures to the end that wins, right? And so he's saying that human humanity is one in this way. 
Listen to what Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 says in the uh, Passion Translation. He says, for his body, Jesus' body, has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. Your gifts, your talents, your degrees, your accomplishments, your, your innate abilities, your strength, it is not for you. It's not just for your four and no more. Or five or six if you're the bushes. <laughs> but it is for other people. Right. And if you understand that you have to compromise or have to think beyond yourself, then it engages and allows God to deal with other people, and he will, he will move chess pieces across that board to get the right people to you to reciprocate that same type of compromise, that same type of grace, that same type of favor. He it said, I went on to write here, no one person is able to do it all successfully, but everyone has become a critic. No one can do anything for successfully, but it's funny to me how in this day and age, so many people have adopted the position of being a critic. You know, armchair coaches, backseat drivers. And then it's because, and, and then the reason being, just is just the, this is biblically speaking, because they, people aim in, their la in these last days to be a hoarder of authority, power, and glory. Lust of the flesh, lust of the, uh, lust of the eyes, and the vanity of life. This is the counter practice. This is how people tend to act in society today when it comes to conflict and this notion of compromise. The counter practice is control. Control, where one party decides, forget, you know what, forget y'all, I'll just do it. Just give it all to me and I'll just do it. And that is so unhealthy and so counterintuitive of the will of God. Because when you take on the responsibility of doing something that was meant for a multitude of people to do, you fail in the overall accomplishment. And the enemy would have you to think that you're more successful alone. And then the more successful alone you think you are, the more you'll function in that realm. And then you're wondering why your body's breaking down, why your relationships are fractured, why you're not at peace, why you seem, feel like everyone is against you and not for you, because you've already demonstrated, I don't want or need you all. Right? This is what Exodus 18, verses 17 says in the New Living Translation. 17 and 18, he says, this is Jesse, Moses' father-in-law, talking to him. Because Moses was at the helm and he was taking care of business, y'all, but he was wearing thin. And this is what Jesse said to him. He said, it is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out, and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. You know, oftentimes we think that what the successes that we see today are based off of the individuals or individual that might be at the head of it. But no person got anywhere by themselves. That's right. Linked Up Church did not get here by ourselves. Pastor Gregory did not get here without me, and Lord knows I, I didn't get here without him. But guess what? We didn't get here without those seven people in our dining room and living room like Tonette back in 2014 to helping to get things together. We serve and minister to right around six to 7,000 people a week between online and in this building. That's how many people we reach a week. There is no way that two people can do that without a wonderful staff. We have an awesome staff. We have a dynamic staff. We have a talented and gifted staff. And they're all gifted in their own way, right? We don't always like each other. In fact, when I hire them, when we hire them and bring them on, they all sit down with me and I let them know, listen, we will have conflict. There will be seasons that we don't like each other and that's okay. 
As long as we talk about it, we will be all right, but we all have to love one another. That's right. And love is what will compel us to a conversation. Love is what will compel us to humility. Love is what will compel us to grace and mercy. And ultimately, love is what will propel us to win. Now, we serve that many people. I tell you, the Department of Labor, the IRS, uh, our accountants, ADP, our payroll people, the, all of them are like, how do you get this done? It's miraculous that you all are able to do what you do at the level that you do it with, with 35 people on staff, and 50% of them are, are part-time. How do you do that? Well, yes, there's a, there's a God factor, because Lord knows we can do nothing without him, and he has graced us to do what we do. But even beyond our wonderful, awesome, mighty, talented, and gifted staff members, we have a dream team, y'all. And our dream team gets it done. Our dream team this morning, Pastor Gregor and I pulled on the parking lot at 652 thinking that, oh, you know, they're just setting up. No, Mike and all of them, the parking lot team already had cones out, lights on, set up, moved cars, lined up. The, the, the media department and the sound department and the music department was already, well, definitely the sound department was already here, parked over in their parking spots. They get things done. Yeah. So that's the 100% club right there, right? But that 100% club, the 80% of that club is the dream team. 20% is the staff. Mm -hmm. And wherever the dream team might lack or slack, our staff has to make that up. That's right. They have to be willing to compromise their positions, their roles, their titles, you know how many times Pastor Gregory came out here to move chairs? Pastor Gregory not special, but his heart makes him special. <laughs> Compromising those things and not thinking that we're too good for certain responsibilities is what, is what makes the dream work. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So when we're willing to compromise, we're willing to, in other words, relinquishing our will and our attitude and our position or, and or title to get things done, we ultimately win. Mm -hmm. yep, I ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, and so when I think about compromise, right, in the context of any type of relationship, just think this way. I don't get everything that I want. She doesn't get everything that she wants. I have to give up a little, she has to give up a little in order for us to gain something greater that either one of us could have achieved on our own. That's right. Do you all see that? I have to give up a little. She has to give up a little. So I'm telling you, listen, if you're single out there, don't get married if you're not willing to compromise. Ooh, you're not Lord. going to that and say, I'm not changing. This is who I am. You knew that when you married me. It wasn't a problem when we were dating. It shouldn't be a problem. Let me tell you, after you all get married, you're not dating anymore. So the expectations are going to change. That's right. That's right. Okay, just That's wanted to right. throw that out. Let's talk about focus. Number four, focus That's on good. the real issue. Focus on the real issue. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12. You ever talk to someone about one thing? And then you ask them a question about this, and they start talking about something else. Anybody ever had to deal with that kind of situation, right? And so <laughs> the real issue is over here, but because they don't want to address it, they go somewhere else, right? Then we have to spend all our time trying to get them back over here because this is the real issue that we're trying to address. Let's read Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. English Standard Version says, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. So notice, his issue with Moses, uh, the real issue is he is upset because Moses is married, what? Now, in case you don't understand what a Cushite woman is, she was black. And so I just want to be clear God has never, ever been, it's not an issue with God when you marry outside of your race. That's an issue with us, not with God. The issue with God is always whose God do you serve? So he doesn't want you marrying someone that does not serve and worship him. 
He doesn't care anything about the color of your skin. I need a little bit better amen in here. I tease my daughter all the time. She's a quarter Korean. I said, I always tell her, I wouldn't be surprised if you bring home uh, Kim Young Un or somebody. <laughs> and, and she laughs and we joke, but I really wouldn't. Because at the end of the day, as long as he loves God and he's committed to treating her good for the rest of his life, he's going to be my son and I'm going to treat him like my son for the rest of my life. Because it will never have anything to do with the color of his skin. But Miriam and Aaron, they're speaking against Moses, which is really a diversion. You'll see it in a moment because of the Cushite woman uh, whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. Verse 2, and they said, has the Lord indeed only spoken through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Mm -hmm. Right? So really they're using the distraction of the Cushite woman to try to draw the Israelites after them when God had chosen Moses to be their leader, okay? And so, really, the goal here is to, in, in any form of communication, stay on topic and focus on what the real issue is at hand, okay? And I'm going to use an illustration in a moment. Let's talk about a counter practice. A huge counter practice that we do as human beings is something called avoidance, right? And so if that deflect mechanism doesn't work where we try to talk about something else, then we just try to avoid it all together. So the way guys will do that is they just won't come home. Or if they do come home, they'll go in the man cave, right? And they'll do everything that they can do to just avoid being around what the real issue is because they really don't want to deal with that. So how many know the real issue never goes away and the longer you avoid it, all it does is just keeps building and building and building until one day it explodes, okay? So avoidance, no one takes action or responsibility to address the real issues, and then watch this, then everyone suffers. So now if there are children involved, I mean, no, the children are now suffering because of the parents' behavior. Right? Yep. And so now the, the parents can make an issue that the kids didn't have anything to do with. But because they can't resolve their conflict, right, now they can easily take that out on other people. Right? This is how important this is, okay? This is what Desmond Tutu said. He said, my humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. Right? And so I want to go all the way back to why this series started. Right? So if you don't know how to communicate, then you cannot resolve conflict. If you cannot resolve conflict, then you cannot create and set new expectations. If you can't set new expectations, then you can't create boundaries. Right? And so here's an example of sometimes how uh, people will skirt issues issues that are really the real issue. They'll kind of go around it, I think and they'll I try to, to deal with it this way. Babe, did you eat another donut? Yeah, I ate another donut. What? Oh, go on. Ate another oh, donut. Then they'll go over to the donut. pantry, right? I just bought these Girl Scout cookies. Did you just eat a whole row? Why are you row? counting Girl Scout cookies? Did you just eat a whole row of these Girl Why are you Girl counting Girl Scout cookies, though? And they go out to dinner later on. She orders a, her meal, right? Are you really getting ready to eat all of that? Never mind what I'm about to eat. Why are you so consumed with what I'm about to eat? So notice, because he's trying to avoid what the real issue See, Is the real issue the donut, the cookies, or her eating her whole meal? Just pick it with me Can anybody tell me what's the real issue? I didn't say, see, look at you. I didn't, that, she said it, but I didn't say that. What, what's the real issue? He wants her to lose some weight, right? And so, and how many know this works both ways? It's not just him to her. You know, it might go this way on his end. Boy, it look like you ate a real good meal today. Boy, look like, <laughs> boy, look like you ate a lot today. Boy, look at, oh, stomach just resting on your, on your belt buckle there, whatever, right? <laughs> and, and so what happens is they end up starting to jab each other. Picking on one another picking on each other instead of having a healthy com uh, conversation around it, right? It can even go into money, right? 80, did you? Who spent, now you know who spent it. Who spent this $80 at Am on Amazon? You it's see, only two people you, you, use this car. See, he didn't spend it. Who you, spent this you know, money? It was for you. 
I didn't need that, and I, I didn't ask for, for that. Yes, you did. No, no, no. No, I, I didn't need that. Yes. If I needed it, I would have bought it for myself. No. Why would I even talk to you about it? It's an issue. You just want to pick on me about finances. So, so hold on. See, that's why we can't get nowhere. Because the more money I make, the more you spend. No, then, 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 then what, what are we going to do about it? See, see, I tell you, I can think of a lot of things I can do about it. <laughs> And you see how people do instead of having a healthy conversation around, watch this, the first issue was weight gain, right? So what they should have did was came together and said, hey, babe, let's have a healthy conversation around weight, a healthy lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle, right? And then let's both work on this well, together. Pray on that first, depending on, you know. <laughs> what? Sometimes people can a good conversation is good, but they got to pray on how to talk about it. Yeah, for sure. That's what we've been telling them all the way up to this point. And so, you know, agree to have a healthy conversation around a healthier lifestyle. Exactly. If it's financial, why am I going to get upset about what she spent if I never sit down and talk to her about what we have and create a budget, right? that we both can work within to get what she needs out of the household income, get what I need out of the household income, but still accomplish our goals together, right? And so think about it. We're fighting over something that we've never had a healthy conversation around so that we can understand and resolve the conflict so that we can set some new expectations and then create boundaries so that we don't treat each other like this again. See, in life, folks, I do not get to treat her the way I want to treat her and keep her. I have to treat her the way she expects to be treated based off of how she's communicated to me. If I want to keep her and have something healthy and I actually love her, then I'll respect that and then we'll begin to work together, grow together so that we can have a healthy marriage. Because I don't know about you, I don't want to live with somebody I don't like. I want to spend all of my life fighting and arguing and bickering. Hello, somebody. I want to get along and resolve conflict and move to the next level. Exactly. And I cannot hold him or anyone else, for that matter, responsible for how I'm feeling if we didn't talk about it. Like I got osmosis or something. Like I just know how you feel. Telekinesis can just, Telekinesis. just move stuff and, and make stuff be known. I can't hold anyone responsible for what I failed to communicate, especially if I did not communicate the specific or the real issue. If I skirted around a situation, how I many you know they, they, they don't know? So they're going to address the skirted issue. You know, I tell people all the time, when you're trying to appeal to people and you're trying to win people, be your authentic self. Because if you're somebody else, they will either like you or not like you based off of the representative, and you fail anyway. Know people and show people who you really are. Be your authentic, true, best self so that if they reject you or accept you, it's off of who you are and not who you try to be. Excellent. Amen. Amen. The last point in conflict resolution um, it's not the overall last, but this is the last of the top five, is to remain gracious, gentle, and patient. Is to remain gracious, gentle, and patient. We've shared a lot of information. The Bible has a lot of information to share. Some of you are getting downloads just in your spirit in areas where you're asking questions. So should I not? Should I do this? All this shoulda, woulda, couldas and stuff like that, right? But you're not going to be perfect or have perfected this tomorrow. Right. Nor can you expect whoever you talk to to get this corrected and perfected tomorrow. So you're going to need to be gracious, gentle, and patient as they continue to uh, develop and grow. If I'm talking about spouses here or if I'm talking about my child or my children, I have to give them space to grow. Because right. in a spouse situation, they've been like this for 30, 40, 50 years. And I'm just now talking to them about this. I can't expect them to change this tomorrow. Right. But ongoing conversations and rewards, I'm encouraging him just as much as I'm telling him what I need, right. helps this gracious, gentle, and patient process develop and mature in that other individual. Listen to what 2 Timothy verse 2 and 24 says in the Passion. He says, for a true servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if there's a true servant, can there be a false servant? Yes. 
Yes, there can, because here is who it is. For a true servant of our Lord Jesus Christ will not be argumentative, but gentle toward all and skilled in helping others see the truth, having great patience toward the immature. That's good. Whoa, ho. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. He says there that a true servant of our Lord will not be argumentative, will not be argumentative, but gentle toward all and skilled in helping others see the truth, having great patience toward the immature. And just because you might be greatly mature in one area does not mean that you may be That's so good. mature in other areas. That's right. Amen. I still got a lot of maturing to go. I mean, I've come a long way, but I've got a lot more maturing to accomplish in my temper. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to, you need to shut that down. You, 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 you need to stay in your corner. You need to stay in your corner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all going to pray for him tonight, right? Now, you just said you need help in that area. Let God help you. <laughs> I ain't confessing my faults to you. <laughs> but then he says, being patient toward all, skilled to see, help others seeing the truth, having great patience toward the immature. Yeah. And so what, like he said, what I, he needs from me, he has to communicate that to me. That's right. I have to own it and work towards developing it and vice versa, even with your children. You cannot discipline and deal with your children the exact same way, especially if they're a boy and a girl. You, the Holy Spirit uniquely made them just like he uniquely made you. And you know that you need to be dealt with in a certain way. Right. Your children need to be known and loved according to who they are and not this playbook that you had from when you was a kid and now you want to enforce this on That's them. True. That's true. That's true. We were so guilty of when I was a kid, this, this, and this happened. When, how I many had you, to walk eight miles of school. With when I was a kid, school. I got popped in the mouth for just looking crazy, right? <laughs> my son said, I can't relate to that because this is my life right now. <laughs> and my daughter let us know, yeah, that's when you were a kid. This is me now, right? So we have to deal with even our children after who they are, right? And then be gentle and gracious and patient with them as they continue to develop. The counter practice, though, oftentimes is being too accommodating, i.e. enabling. Ooh. Where one party is willing to forfeit their position and it ends up making the situation worse makes it worse most often. There's a fine line between helping and enabling. And at some point, you have to pull back and allow God to be God because you cannot take a throne that you did not die for by being somebody's God of help, of deliverance, of financial need. You cannot be that. That's right. And oftentimes, when they come back to you three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-nine times, <laughs> It's because you have trained them that that's what they need to do, and you inadvertently become their God in that area. And you never move out the way to allow God be God. Yeah, in their lives. In their lives. That's good. And it's oftentimes easy for parents to make this mistake because we don't want to see our children fail. And depending on the degree of failure, we don't want to be embarrassed. Because the enemy will convince us that we failed at our parenting when our child made a, made a bad decision. Being a parent takes humility. That's right. Because you have to be willing to go through the trenches with them so that they can develop and be the best them that they can be, even right. if it means you have to just love them through their suffering. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 12, 16 in the Passion Translation says, If you shrug off an insult and refuse to take an offense, you demonstrate discretion indeed. But the fool has a short fuse and will immediately let you know when he's offended. See, it's okay to shrug off an offense as in not personalize it, but he didn't say not talk about it. Jesus is our supreme example. 
He let them know when he was mad. He tossed the tables, took out that whip. <laughs> he let them know. However, he didn't keep it. He kept it moving, yeah. right? Yeah. Proverbs 15, 1 in the message says, a gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. A gentle tongue diffuses anger. So in your gentleness, in your kindness, in your grace, and in your patience, you can continue to coach and talk them through a situation, whether it's a coworker, your child, your spouse, continue to do that, but not start attacking them right. in their growth process. Right. And understand this, when you talk about grown folks, grown folks want to see effort. We want to see effort, and with effort comes progress. I can deal with that all day long. Mm -hmm. It's when you just keep doing the same old thing that I'm like, Father, long-suffering, Father, I need long-suffering. I'm about she long-suffering. No, she never. Right? Yeah. And that's where we need to park ourselves because guess what? God has been long-suffering, gracious, patient, and gentle towards you. He has been all that towards you. And when you understand how much grace you've needed, he will always supply you with that in dealing with other people. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Are you all getting anything out of this today? All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and wrap this up. Uh, just the conflict resolution portion. of How many of you all are single in here? Raise your hand if you're single, not married. All right? Praise God. All right, that's a healthy portion of the people, right? So I just want to really remind us that conflict is unavoidable. Yes, Lord. Right? And so, you know, if you just think back over the course of your life and think about maybe how many boyfriends you've had, how many girlfriends you had, I just want you to think about each of those relationships, why they started and why they stopped. Right? So a lot of times we think it was them and not me. Right? But if I keep going into a new relationship and history keeps repeating itself, how I many you know at some point I've got to look at myself, right? And so I really want to encourage your hearts today that if you ever, it's, it's foolish to believe that I'm just going to get rid of this relationship and get a new one and things are going to be better if I never change. Mm -hmm. So if I never learned how to communicate in my previous one, if we never learned how to resolve conflict, if we never created new expectations, right, if we didn't set new boundaries, I mean, I have not grown. That's right. So I just right. take myself into a new situation, right? And if you understand relationships, it's only fun at first. Yep. Until we start seeing who we really are. And then that vicious cycle starts again. Then, God forbid, we start having sex with people, right? We're really marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing. Marry and divorce. So when we really do get married, that behavior has become so dysfunctional that we still solve our problems the same way we leave. And you know what? Amen. That's good. And who we are will show up. Yeah, every time. Every time. So not just in that relationship, but that's going to show up in the job. Yeah. Your interactions with other people. Mm -hmm. It'll show up in the drama that continues to happen between you and your friends, mm -hmm. among the family members. Yeah. Who you are will always show up. Yeah. And when that person shows up, you have to be humble enough to take a good look at the man in the mirror and say, I need to make some changes yeah. because the world is not going to adapt to you. That's right. All right. So, so the lesson, your takeaway. Your previous relationship went as far as your ability to communicate. That's how far that relationship went. Then soon as conflict presented itself and it couldn't be resolved, that relationship stopped. So in a lot of cases, it wasn't that I didn't have a good situation that we could not have been good together. That wasn't the issue. The issue was we can't resolve conflict. And if we can't resolve conflict, we cannot progress in our relationship. So it stopped where the conflict started. Okay? Let's read these last two verses. We'll let you go for today. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read 17 through 19 out of the Message Bible. It says, don't hit back. See, don't try to get even with people. 
Discover beauty in everyone. So while they're talking bad about you, give them a compliment. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Amplified Classic says, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So it says, if you've got it in you, get along with everyone. So notice, at least do your best to get along with the people that you love. So now you can at least walk away with peace in your heart knowing you did everything you could to resolve the conflict. The challenge is it takes two people to actually resolve it. And if they didn't want that, at least you did the best you could. All right, let's keep on reading here. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. God said, I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. So you don't have to try to prove who's right or wrong in that situation. You just be right with God and let God judge it. And how many you know he's never judged a situation wrong in his entire life, okay? Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 12 out of the Message Bible. And let's all stand to our feet. We're going to close with this verse. Let's all stand to our feet. Listen to this. This is so powerful. It's a complimentary text to Romans chapter 12. Listen to what it says in the Message Bible, verses 8 through 12. It says, summing up. Be agreeable. Now, that's what we talked about earlier, right? We don't always have to agree, but we have to learn how to be agreeable. It says here, be sympathetic. Be loving. Be compassionate. Be humble. That goes for all of you. No exceptions. Listen to what he says. No retaliation. No sharp tongue sarcasm. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all can cut a person in a minute? Come on, let's be honest in here. Don't, don't lie in the house of God. Raise your hand. How many of y'all can cuss? I mean, cut a person, and, and they didn't even know they got cut. They just bleeding, just leaving, bleeding, and they didn't realize you just sliced them. Be honest. How many of y'all can right? listen to what the Word of God says? It says here, this is so good, folks. That goes to all, no exceptions, no retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job to bless. So while they're being sarcastic, return a blessing to them. Demonstrate your maturity in that moment. While they're acting low, you go high. I think it was a prophetess that said that. What did a prophetess that said? When they go low, you go high. What, what prophetess was that? Was that Michelle? Ob okay, all right. She's not a prophetess. But those were some powerful words right there, right? All right, so watch this now. So then you bless. So, you, so when they're retaliating and doing all of that, sharp tongue sarcasm, instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. You'll be a blessing and also get a blessing. Isn't that good? See, see you'll be a blessing, but you'll also get a blessing. So while they're arguing, going off, doing all that stuff, you say, but I love you. And you look good today. I like that dress on you. I ain't talking about my dress right now, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you just keep being who you are and let them be who they are. Come on, somebody. It's good right here. Not, not, not only, I love what the language says here. You'll be a blessing, but watch this. You'll also get a blessing. Yes. Whoever wants to embrace life and see the day fill up with good, how many of y'all want more good days than bad days? This is how he said to do it. Here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all of this with approval, listening and responding well to what but he's asked, asked. But he turns his back on those, those who, who do, do evil things. So now you have to ask yourself, which side of that do I want to be on? Do I want to let them drag me in the mud, right, and stop me from being a blessing and also receiving a blessing? Or do I want to stay in the arena of what pleases God, right, so that his blessing can remain on my life? I believe I'm in a room with some smart people. That's right. I mean, I would rather stay on the blessing side versus the evil side, right? So now. This is what I want to do today. If you're truly wise, right, and you have done an inventory, an audit of all of your previous relationships, you can draw a conclusion that I am a constant in all of my relationships, right? And so if I don't change, then all of my future relationships will look like my past relationships. 
right? And so if I don't know God, I don't have the capacity to change the way we've just ministered it to you. So the first relationship you want to get right is your relationship with God. Once you get your relationship right with God, how I many you know now it's easy to get my relationship right with other people? Okay, I want you to ponder on that. Think about that for a moment. So now while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking, unless you've been assigned to do so. I know in my heart there are some sharp people in here today, and you don't want to walk out of here today not being a better version of yourself, better than the way that you came in. And the best way to do that is by having a personal relationship with God. So if you're in this room today and you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, you get that relationship right, and it'll help you get all other relationships right. So if that's you and you're not saved, I want to pray with and for you today. Secondarily, you might say, Pastor, I'm saved. I got away from God. I went back out into the world. I started doing things my way versus his way, and I can see the results of that. I see it in my relationships. I see it everywhere I go on my job. I'm angry. I'm acting out. I'm responding with hostility. And you're here today, and you're saying, God, I heard enough. I want to rededicate my life. I want to return. I want to come back to you. Some churches call that being backslidden. We just call it being out of, out of fellowship. So if you want to come back home today and rededicate your left life to God, I want to pray with and for you. And then my final invitation today, maybe you don't have a church home. Man, God wants more people in his family, not just his saved family, but in the lo local church family as well. So if you don't have a good church home, my wife and I, just like today, every time you come in this building, we'll make sure that you hear the word of God and the word of God only. But we'll also love on you. We'll pray for you. We've got connect groups for you to get involved with, dream teams for you to serve on so that you can meet other people and build healthy relationships with like-minded people. So if you don't have a good church home, I want to invite you to join Linked Up Church today. So again, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking unless you've been assigned to do so. I gave three invitations. The first was to get saved. Give your life to God. Have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Second is to return to God. Rededicate your life. Come on back home. Get your life back right with him. Third is to join Linked Up Church. I want to pray for you, but I'll only know that you desire my prayers by the lifting up of your hand. So if you want prayer on any one of those three invitations... Would you shoot your hand up in the air right now? Just lift it up and keep it up as high as you possibly can. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you up there in the risers. Praise God for you. God bless you right over here. You can put your hands down. Listen, I would never, ever, listen very carefully, never put off to tomorrow what the Holy Spirit is convicting you about today. Well, how do I know he's convicting you? Because you're saying something's telling me I need to raise my hand. That's not something. That is the person of the Holy Spirit. Why is he convicting you that way? Because he loves you. He's literally trying to get you out of something that's bad for you and place you into something that is very good for you. And that's why I'm taking a little longer today because I know there are more people in here. So if you didn't raise your hand that first time, but on the inside of you and in your heart, you know the Holy Spirit is convicting you. You need to be saved. You need to get your life back right. You need to come back to God. Rededicate or you need to join Linked Up Church. You didn't raise your hand that first time, but you know you should have. Would you go ahead and lift it up in the air right now? Just go ahead, shoot it up. Lift it up, keep it up as high as you possibly can. Go ahead, lift that hand up, shoot it up, keep it up. God bless you. I see that hand right there. Anyone else? Lift it up, keep it up. Because God loves you and we love you too. God bless you. I see that hand. I want you to do me one more favor. If you raised your hand that first time or that second time or you didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you know you should have, would you gather up all of your personal belongings, step into the nearest aisleway, come meet me right down here at the front. Linked up church, give them a big round of applause as they come. Come on down now in Jesus' name.
All right, praise God. Is that someone still coming? Praise God. Help her feel like she's making the best decision she could have ever made. Yeah. I believe there are others out here. Come on, don't walk out of here the same way that you came in. Would you all do me one more favor? Many of you all brought people that you love dearly. Is she still coming? Praise God for her. Come on, Linked Up Church. Praise God for her. Come on, while she's coming. Many of you all brought people here today. You know their story. You know their situation. So if you're led right now, I want you to ask the person next to you, are you saved? Are you in right fellowship with God? Do you want to join the church? And then sometimes they just need that little nudge. Just grab them by the hand and say, I'll go down there with you. And when you take that first step, that second step will just get easier and easier and easier. And I'm telling you, we're going to rejoice and we're going to shout and we're going to give God glory like you've never heard before. Who else is that that just needed that little encouragement? Who else is that? Come on down. Come on. Come on. We don't have all day. Come on so that we can celebrate you, so that we can give God glory for you. Who else is that? Who else is that? Who else is that? Who else is that? Just take that first step. God loves you. And we love you so much too. Praise God. Praise God. Come, come on, come on, come on. Come on, linked up church. Praise God. Come on, is there anybody else? Come on, just grab them by the hand. I'll go down there with you. Come on, look up there in the risers. Come on. Come on. Come on, linked up church. Fishing. Come on, we're fishing right now. Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, anyone else? Come on, anyone else? God loves you and we love you too. Anyone else? All right. Praise God. I have peace today. Can we give all of these who responded today another big round of applause? I just want to say you are so brave. Yes. You are so courageous. And, so and there loved. is such a reward on the other side of your obedience yes. today. Would you all do me one more favor? Just lift up one hand towards heaven because that's where your help comes from. If you're watching online right now and you sincerely want to give your life to God or return to him, I want you to lift up one hand too and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, the Son of God. is the Son of God. I believe, I believe that, he died, that he died, rose from the grave, rose from the grave and he is alive right now. Alive right now. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, into my heart. And save me now. As a result, As a result what, I've confessed with my mouth, what I've confessed with my mouth, what I believe in my heart, I, in my heart, I am right now, right now born, again, born again and in right standing with God. Right standing and all my sins, all my sins are, forgiven are forgiven in Jesus' name. Come on, lift up a big shout in here. Come on, thank God for them. Hallelujah. We're so happy for each one of you. If you all would, if you would look to my left, see that young man with that Bible that's your right, lift it up in the air. We will not keep you long. He's just going to show you from the Word of God what you came down here for. If you all would, your family, your friends, they'll wait on you. Go ahead and follow him right now. Would you all give them another big round of applause as they go? All right. And so everyone that's left while they're walking out, okay, everyone while they're walking out, if you believe online or in the room, if you believe you prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, but you said it is just too many people in here and I am not comfortable going down in front of all of these people. I want everyone to stop moving for a moment. I'm not, I haven't dismissed yet. Still on altar call. I want you to be respectful. It's still an altar call. Okay, unless it's an emergency, please be respectful. All right, listen very carefully. You're saying to yourself, I prayed that prayer sincerely from my heart. I just didn't want to go down in front of all of those people. We've made provision for you. We have something here called a connect card. If you'll fill that card out in its entirety in a moment, I'm going to take up an offering. If you'll take this card, fill it out, check the box that applies to you. Uh, salvation, rededication, membership, baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever your need is, 
We'll take it from that offering receptacle and a minister will follow up with you accordingly. And every week we have people give their lives to Christ, rededicate their lives, join the church through these connect cards. So if you'll take a moment to do that, drop it in that offering receptacle when it goes by. If you have not completed it by that time, it's okay. You can put it in the offering receptacles as you exit the worship center or just give it to any of our ushers that are stationed around our worship center. God bless you all. You can be seated. And while you're being seated, seated, I am privileged to announce it is tithes and offering time. It is blessing time. Of course, there are three ways that you can give. I'm setting up the text to give way uh, right here on my phone. And so the first way is through text to give. That number is at the bottom of your screen. You can also you can also go to our website at linkedupchurch.com, but you can also use the white offering envelope to send the seat pocket in front of you. If you use the white offering envelope, just make sure that you fill it out in its entirety for proper tax credit at the end of the year. And so while you're figuring out and deciding how God's leading you to give today, I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses 6 through 8. And it says, remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. And a lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you. I love the, what the rest of this says. That will protect you from sob stories or against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in his giving. Verse 9 says, and God can pour out uh, pour out on the blessings or pour out blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for everything and anything. More than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the wind, giving, the needy, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. And then it goes on to say he'll give seed to the sower so that he can multiply the seed that you sow. So even if you don't have seed to sow, how many know you can believe for it? And, and because your heart is to sow, God will give you seed. And then he'll multiply that seed that you sow so that you can have more seed to sow. That's just how good God is, right? Let's lift our tithes, our offerings to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just like to be present when I'm doing this. So I'm actually giving in this moment. And so let me put the amount. All right. And boom. All right. Let's all pray. And so, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for this privilege and this opportunity to sow. We do it generously because you're a generous God, Father. We're giving based off of how we desire to receive. So we know the end result of that is that all of our needs will be met and in abundance beside. Father, and even for those desiring to give today but don't have it, you promised that you would give seed to the sower, Father. So if their heart is to give, give them seed so that they can sow and then you can multiply it back to them so that they can get involved in your giving and receiving process. So ministry and angels, go forth. Bless every household sowing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ushers, you may serve the offering buckets. While they're serving the offering buckets, I want to encourage you to go to our website and look at the announcements, okay? You can see them all on our website. You can also see our announcements inside of the app. And so the other thing I want to draw you all's attention to is that on March the 24th, now on Wednesday nights, we're doing a marriage, uh, an enrichment, and what is it? And marriage, prepare and enrich workshop. Prepare and enrich workshop on Wednesday nights. We're having a great time. Relationships, not just marriage. Yeah, not just marriage, but relationships. We're having a great time. It's about 120 couples, uh, yeah. 200 people, 200 total people, something like that. Quite a few. Quite a few people. We're having a great time. The way we're going to conclude that, of course, with this message on Sunday mornings, is we're going to have a comedian here, Akatunde. We've had him here before. So he's going to do like a 45-minute set, just get us laughing, good belly laughs. But then also he's going to moderate a Q&A session with my wife and I. And we're going to answer all questions. It's for single, married, whatever your situation, just general relationships on your job. Whatever question questions that you may have. We're going to do our best to answer those questions biblically. So we're going to have a night of laughter, a night of fun, and a night where we get to answer as many questions as we possibly can. And so uh, I don't think there's any registration for that. Nope. Just come on out on that Friday night, Friday, March the 24th, and, uh, and be blessed by that. Did you want to say anything yep, about no, the t-shirts? That's, that's oh, there are um, 
Glow shirts, I'm sorry, <laughs> still on sale outside at the Connect Central, and they're $10 if you want to, you know, glow. You never know what might you, you might need it for a little bit later on. So you might want to avail yourself to that if you didn't get yours. See, and if you're single and you're glowing, you, you never know shine, who might see you. Shine, if you I'm sorry. All right. If you're a first-time visitor here at Linked Up Church, this is your very first time at Linked Up Church. Would you please stand to your feet? Your very first time visiting Linked Up Church. Please stand to your feet. Your first time visitor. Welcome, welcome. Come on, can we give our first time visitors a big round of applause? So glad to have you. So many visitors today. Obviously, that hand clap is for you. Please remain standing. Uh, on behalf of my wife and I, of course, you're welcome here. We've done our best along with this staff to demonstrate to you from the time you parked out on that parking lot till you walked into this worship center that you are welcome. There's one last way that we want to demonstrate our appreciation, and that's by holding a reception in your honor where we serve light food. We have refreshments for you as well. Both my wife and I will be out there, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Your family and your friends, they're welcome to attend as well. So if you would, just gather up all of your personal belongings, and your family and friends, again, are uh, able to attend as well if they would like to. And every beautiful lady. All of these pretty ladies that are waving at you right now, they're just waving real pretty ladies. They're going to take you to that reception area. So if you all would, go ahead and follow them in Jesus' name. And while they're leaving, can we give our first time visitors another big round of applause? Okay. All right. We're, we have not concluded the folk series. We will conclude it on next Sunday. So God bless you all. Work and practice conflict resolution this week in a healthy way so that the people that you love the most can get the best version of yourself. God bless you and have a great week in God. Minister David will formally dismiss the service. Amen. Can we give our pastors a great big hand? Woo-hoo! How many of you guys are enjoying this series? It's getting gooder and gooder. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I just want to remind you, if you have a testimony or a prayer request, you can send it to WeCare at LinkedUpChurch.com. Every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we have Hour of Power of Prayer. Please come out and join us. We are having a great time. Immediately following service, if you need more prayer, get someone in agreement with you, there will be ministers standing at the altar to assist you. I want you to turn around and tell your neighbor, say, hey, have a great week. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.